there's always cats just everywhere. <laughs> Hello everyone, so today I am here to do my October wrap up. I read 19 books this month, which honestly is shocking to me, like genuinely shocking because this month for the past like three weeks, maybe four weeks, all I've been able to think about is Astro. My mind doesn't have enough capacity for like anything else. Like Exo has been happening and I like literally just, I, I, it's Astro. So I don't really know how I managed to read this much. It's 100% because of school. But, um, this month I only read <laughs> six books for myself and then 13 books for school. So also before I begin, I renamed my cat, this cat that you guys know as Panda is now angry and running away. Um, his name is now Yubin, or we're gonna call him Bin Bin or Binny. And for people who are gonna be like, why did you rename him? I didn't name him Panda. That was his name at the shelter, and I just never thought to rename him because I was originally actually fostering him and everything. Uh, so it would have been awkward if I had, like, renamed him and stuff while I had him for that first week because I had to give him back if things weren't going right. So that is why I'm only now finally naming him what I actually wanted to name him. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, today I'm going to talk about all of the books that I read this month. So we're going to start with the books that I read for myself, kind of like I did last time, um, just in case people don't want to hear about the books that I read for school. So this month I participated in one readathon, which was Spookathon, which I have a vlog for, which I had pneumonia during, which was a great time. Um, and then the other books I just read on my own time, so. The first book I finished for myself this month was Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. I also have a full vlog review kind of style video for this book. Um, I read it like the second it came out within like three days um, and I really enjoyed it. It was definitely not as good as the first book for me personally um, but I did really really enjoy it. I gave it a four to five stars and I'm really interested to see where Lainey Taylor goes with this. I also totally repurchased Daughter of Smoke and Bone which I unhauled a while back just because I need to reread those books after finishing this. So. I didn't love it as much as the first book, but certain other people did. If you want to hear all my spoilery discussion and thoughts and stuff, go watch the vlog, though. The next book I read, I honestly had no intentions of reading until Haley, my friend Haley. If you guys don't know Haley, I don't know where you've been for the last, like, year and a half. But um, she absolutely, like, adored this and convinced me to get it. It was on, like, I was pre-ordering another book on Barnes & Noble. And for some reason, when I was pre-ordering that book, it, like, popped up being like, since you're pre-ordering a book, this book is only $10. And I'm like okay. So I got it and I read it and I really liked it. And that is an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. I'm not a big fan of John Green. Most people know this about me. I kind of really hate a lot of his books. <laughs> But um, Hank was always my favorite of the Vlogbrothers when I did watch them when I was younger. So hearing that it wasn't romance or contemporary and it was Hank and his humor was in it, I was like, I guess I'll give it a try. And I ended up really enjoying it. I gave it like four and a half, four point seven five 4.75 out of 5 stars. I really, really liked it. I really enjoyed the commentary in this book about social media and the internet and everything. And I'd say if you're a person who is like sort of a presence on the internet, you'd really, really enjoy this. Uh, but yeah, so I really liked it. I liked how just, uh, it was really good. I don't know how to explain this book. It's about a world where just all of a sudden, all at once, these giant robots, statue things, like show up in every single city in the world. And we're following the first girl who kind of spots one, I guess, and she makes a YouTube video about it and goes viral. This is kind of like the Themis Files meets like Station Eleven, kind of. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it other than that. Maybe also a little bit of The Oracle Year by Charles Soule. That's this book. It was really good. The other big new release that I read this month I have a full review for and that is Killing Commendadori by Haruka Murakami, my most anticipated book of my entire freaking life. Let's get real here. Um, I obviously 
loved it. I gave it a 4.75 out of 5 stars, and again, I have a full review on it that is spoiler-free for the beginning and then a spoilery discussion. Really enjoyed this. Definitely very, very Murakami. <laughs> I keep saying, like, this is quintessential Murakami. Like, this has every trope that you can imagine from the bingo board that he has, and it's just, it was really, really good. We follow a painter in this one and how he paints things that, like, show more than what is actually on the paper, if that makes sense. And then there's, like, a shrine and a bell and this weird dude and a girl. It's great. I loved it. It was so good. All right, and then the rest of the books I read for Spookathon. So the one physical book I read for Spookathon, I also read Killing Commendatory for Spookathon, but, like, not for Spookathon. I just it happened to come during Spookathon. Um, but the only other physical book I read was The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. I read her book We Have Always Lived in the Castle years ago when I was a senior in high school. I read that book and I really enjoyed it and I actually picked this up months ago in like the summertime when I saw it at a used bookstore and I was like it's Shirley Jackson it'll be great for October and then of course this book exploded because of the Netflix original series thingy. I haven't seen that yet I just read the book. <laughs> I gave this like a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I did not find it scary. Um, I feel like this is definitely a story that might translate better to the screen because I just didn't find it that scary. I don't know, I feel like books to me aren't that scary. Like, things in books don't scare me that much. Because it's hard to do like a jump scare in a book, if that makes sense. But yeah, so I enjoyed it, but I am interested in watching the Netflix series because I do think it might be better as a show. And then I listened to a bunch of audiobooks because, again, I had pneumonia, <laughs> so I wasn't really super into using my eyes. So, I read the audiobook for Sadie, which everyone read. This is by Courtney Summers, I believe. I gave this a three and a half out of five stars because I think I enjoyed the audiobook more than the actual book. The audiobook for this is really, really good because it has, like, this podcast element to it. Um, but yeah, this is a very hard-hitting book with all that deals with a lot of like very serious topics and it's like a mystery with podcasts i think a lot of other people would really really like this but i'm just not into podcasts that much but yeah i really tried to like i would give the audiobook like a four or a four and a half out of five stars but like the actual story i don't know if i would have enjoyed if i didn't listen to it because i don't know how entertaining it would have been to read a podcast you know what i mean so i'm trying to be a little bit critical on that i also feel like this is a book i'm totally just gonna forget about in like a month Next, I read I Am Thinking of Ending Things, which is a thriller, and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This is something that's been going around booktube so often recently, um, and everyone's like, oh my god, the ending is insane, like, I don't even understand it. I was the same way until I actually figured it out, like, I just kind of sat there thinking about it. I think reading Murakami prepared me for weird endings and trying to figure them out. Um, but I think I figured out the ending of it. I put it in my Goodreads review under a spoiler warning. So if you're interested in seeing what I thought of that, go read my Goodreads review because I'm obviously not going to spoil it for everyone who hasn't read it. And then I read a Japanese horror book called Confessions and I really enjoyed this. I gave it like a 4.25 out of 5 stars. This was so perfectly Japanese horror. <laughs> I have always said that Japanese lit I really really enjoy because it's very quiet. While American lit is like boom in your face, Japanese lit is very just like quiet and like kind of slice of life and also just like things happen and it's just very it's very quiet. Like that's the best word that I have to describe Japanese lit. And this book was so quiet but so like quietly fucked up. <laughs> there were just things that happened in this book that I was like that's fucked. Oh my god. And like you had to like take a second to be like, oh my god, what what did I just read? This book mostly follows a middle school classroom where the teacher is retiring and because of what happened, her daughter was killed and everyone assumed that it was an accident, but she is positive that it was two people in her class. And basically kind of her getting revenge and just the repercussions of these kids' actions and also figuring out kind of the mystery of what was happening. I really enjoyed this audiobook. It was really, really spooky. So uh, I really highly recommend this if you want just like, it's not like boom in your face, jump scare, scary, but it just like, that was fucked. <laughs> 
And those are all of the books I read for myself. That is so sad. <laughs> Okay, so I guess I'm going to get into books that I read for class. So the first book that I finished was The Dubliners by James Joyce. This was my second time reading this short story collection and it was for the same professor. This was for my Irish Lit class and yeah, we mostly focused on the sisters, Araby, Evelyn, and obviously the dead. So yes, I give this like a three out of five stars. I'm just not that big of a fan of short story collections, so I definitely think those that like kind of hinders my enjoyment of short story collections. <laughs> um, next I read Quicksand by Nella Larson, um, and this was for my American literature class, and I'm not even gonna lie, I didn't really read the entire thing. I kind of skim read it. It was during a very busy week. Um, but this follows a black woman in America and kind of about color in America. Yeah. I gave this a three out of five stars too. Probably would have been higher if I had actually read it because it seemed pretty interesting when we were talking about in class and like there were certain things that really stood out to me, but Oh, I also read Another Country by James Baldwin. This is another one. I'm not even gonna lie and say I read this. I didn't read this, <laughs> but we discussed in class and it seemed cool. Honestly, kind of glad I didn't read it because it doesn't seem like something I would like. I'm really, really, really not a fan of drug use in books and this seemed to be all drugs and sex. So um, it seemed really important and like the discussions we had were really good, but even like the discussions and the quotes that they were pulling were making me low-key uncomfortable. So this was like, I don't even think I should give this a rating. I didn't read it. <laughs> and then I read The Woman Warrior by Maxine Hong Kingston. I had to do a report for this in Asian American literature. And this I gave like four stars. Yeah, I gave this like four stars. Um, I actually quite enjoyed this uh, collection. I found it really interesting and I also find her to be very interesting and very inspiring. Um, but yeah, this is kind of a, it's hard to explain because it's like considered nonfiction like by autobiography, but it's like not necessarily stories about her. And it's like actually there's like a lot of controversy over whether it is fictional or not. Um, it's kind of like a bunch of little like short stories that she is telling that might not even be true, but like we're told to her as a kid. It's hard to explain, but I enjoyed it. It was good and my project was good. So four out of five stars. And then I read Passing by Nella Larson, who also wrote Quicksand. Um, this one I actually really enjoyed. I think I gave this like a four to five stars. Yeah, four to five stars. This was really, really interesting. This is about passing as it was called, or I think it's still called in America as a different race than you are. So in this we follow a African-American woman who her friend passes as white even though she is a black woman. Um, and it's just kind of about that and it brought up a very very interesting discussion in our class. Also the ending of this I'm still confused about. It's very very interesting. So um, I actually really like that. Oh I read a short story collection called 17 Syllables. Oh it's like Hisaye uh, Yamamoto I believe. These were pretty good. I don't remember the names of which ones we read, but they were a lot of like young girls and like learning what it kind of meant to be Asian American and stuff. And I think I gave it like a four to five stars. I'm sorry, I read so many books for class this semester. It's been a lot to remember. And then I read This Monster, which is an anthology of modern Irish poetry. We didn't read the whole thing, obviously. Um, we focused on three authors mostly, which was Seamus Heaney, Evan Boland, and Paula Meehan. So yeah, I don't understand poetry. I never like poetry, so like two out of five stars. Sorry. I always feel bad giving poetry a really low rating, but I literally just don't understand poetry at all. Like, I have to have it explained to me word for word, and it's just not enjoyable at all. <laughs> Okay, next we read a comic book which was really fun and that is American Born Chinese by Jean Luen Young. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars I believe. I actually really enjoyed this. I'm writing an essay on it right now. Um, this is about a young boy who is born in America and he comes from a Chinese family 
and it's kind of just him growing up in the American school system and how he's bullied and like all of that and it also connects to other stories like one about like gods and monkeys and stuff and one about a white boy and it was really interesting I actually really like this I know a lot of people just read this for fun so it was pretty good it was pretty good the next book I loved I like there's just always every once in a while like basically once a semester there's a book that I just freaking love um and this semester it was a line made by walking by sarah Baum. do you guys see all of those sticky notes <laughs> i loved this book um this is a book about it's about a lot of things so it's a like on the surface it's about a woman who's like 25 26 and her grandma dies so she goes and starts living in her grandma's house and it's kind of about that and she starts up a photo project where she takes pictures of dead animals she finds around the property because she's kind of in the middle of nowhere but it's also about like the sense of homelessness and how she like she has like this mantra of being like i want to go home i want to go home but even when she's home she doesn't feel like she's at home which we have a word for that let me find it what was it called solastalgia which is actually a growing condition in like my generation and younger which is a growing which is an anxiety about home do change in environment and this is like basically like i have this i like totally have this when i went to college like my freshman year of college my parents moved out of my childhood home went and bought another house moved into a different apartment and i was in the dorms and now i live in my own apartment and i never have like i don't have this place that i like call home because i still consider my hometown home even though we like don't really live there anymore <laughs> and it's just like if you have that like feeling of like wherever you are you don't feel like you're at home because like even though i consider my hometown at home when i go back it doesn't feel right that's called solastalgia it's not nostalgia it's solastalgia learning some new facts but anyways this book is great i really really personally connected to this character because it's never like she's diagnosed with depression but she also kind of talks about ocd um which i have ocd and just a lot of things that she does I really really connected to like she talks about this in one part like how she knows that there's quicker ways to get somewhere but she doesn't ever look for them like she always just goes in the same path that she always takes and she's also like very obsessed with art and music and like different things like throughout this entire book there's like she tests herself on like topics like she'll just be like works about wrongness I test myself and then she'll talk about a text or a painting or something that has to do with what she was just experiencing i really really enjoyed this this is a contemporary book it felt very contemporary and i really really liked it i actually really highly recommend this it was great i gave it a 4.75 out of 5 stars this might be on my favorite books of the year list all right next up oh i like okay this is gonna make 20 books i didn't actually finish this short story collection because i'm reading it twice this semester i read it the two stories out of this for one class and th then i'm reading the entire collection for another class in like a week but i'm going to talk really briefly about uh, the interpreter of maladies we read when mr Peraza came to dine and interpreter of maladies both of which i'd actually read before i read this collection every single semester i've been an english major but um i really enjoy those two stories mr Peraza is especially just very interesting to me it's because of like especially just what's going on right now it's basically about this man who comes to dine at this young girl's house and her parents are like oh he's not indian he's pakistani and it talks about the war and everything and then interpreter of maladies most people know what that book that story is about it's about basically two indian american people who come back to india and they're like very touristy and stuff like that but really enjoyed those two stories i have to read this entire collection again next semester or next month so you guys will see this in next month's wrap up also um okay and then i read the bluest eye by tony morrison i gave this like a 3.75 4 out of 5 stars I actually really really enjoyed this this is a very hard hitting kind of hard to deal with <laughs> book um it's kind of i don't know I've, uh, there's multiple characters we follow like a young girl and then like a man and there's like a lot of very hard topics and it's about race and what it means to be black and what is blackness and like all of that kind of stuff. Toni Morrison is 
very, very hard hitting with her writing. So this was really good. And then I read The Spinning Heart by Donald Ryan from my Irish Lit class. This was, I'm not even gonna lie, barely read it. I skimmed it because I like took extra time to read A Land Made by Walking because I didn't want to rush through it. And then I had to read this book in like a day. So I totally skimmed over it. So basically in 2000, I think it's 2008, basically Ireland's like banks just went to shit and everyone who was born after 2008 is basically thirty thousand dollars in debt like if you were born in 2008 you are automatically thirty thousand dollars in debt every single person in ireland had to pay back the banks and it's just like the story about kind of like how we lost the generation of people to this financial collapse in ireland because everyone who was born in ireland during this time literally is like so obsessed with money because they kind of have to be and also with material possessions and everything rather than like really focusing on their own culture and stuff so yeah i gave this like a three out of five stars and then I read Whatever Happened to Interracial Love by Kathleen Collins. This book was really hard to rate for me because I, I like, I think it like was doing a lot, but it felt like poetry to me where I just felt too stupid to read this. Like I would read it, like I read it, like I actually read this one and I went into class thinking I knew what it was about. And then we started talking about it and I was like, where are you getting this information from? I just feel stupid reading some stuff, okay? Like, it just goes so over my head. So I didn't really enjoy this, if I'm completely honest. I didn't understand it, mostly. So I gave this a, like, 2.75 out of 5 stars. Those are all of the things I read, I hope. Let's see. Let's double check. Yep, those are all of the things I read this month. 19 total books, one half of a book, so 20 books I talked about. There's my reading chart for this great times great times okay but anyways i hope you guys all enjoyed this wrap up if you stay till the end you are the real mvp and i hope you guys all enjoyed this video definitely leave down in the comments below if you guys have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them as well as if i inspired you to read any book out of this pile i mean if i had to be like read these books i would say killing commendatory an absolutely unremarkable thing and a line made by walken those were probably my favorite books of the month but anyways again i hope you guys all enjoyed this video and and I love you all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!